there are other things I may not be able to say on this program. But when we had the um, uh, first media uh, 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 interaction about uh, four days ago, uh, channels was there, all the, uh, the editors were there, and so on and so forth. We gave them about, uh, uh, about eight kinds of documents related to various aspects of our work in terms of our, uh, in terms of our achievements. Of course, uh, there is no way uh, in a pro in a, on a program like this you will get details of what we do directly with the, uh, with the presidency. But I'm assuring you that all the agencies, all the anti-corruption agencies and related ones, we relate to them and the purpose is to enhance their capacity to perform. Mm. So talking about the special courts, what has informed that need? I mean, because you have said that we don't need to be creating uh, new agencies of, you know, up and down. There, is, there are certain agencies who can do the work. The judiciary will seem as fit enough to do the uh, work. And you, you already said that you're relating with them as well. So what has informed that need to have special courts? Okay. Special courts does not necessarily mean creating another set of federal high courts. It means that on the basis of information available to the judiciary and related agencies, certain judges are presumed to be of high moral standing, number one. Number two, is that the caseload of the judges are sometimes uh, too heavy. Therefore, instead of the same judge handling armed robbery today, uh, handling uh, 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 divorce tomorrow, handling employer-employee uh, 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 matter the next day, you select certain judges to concentrate only on cases of corruption. That is the, because to create new courts, as you are thinking. You don't think that that would create a rift within the judiciary as, you know, saying that some judges are clean and others are not? Uh, you cannot say because a particular recommendation is problematic, then you will not pursue it. There is no problem that is free of, this, of a possible dysfunction. But you will not say because of possible dysfunction, you will not pursue it if it has merit. What you will do is to try to, have, to limit uh, uh, the, the, the consequences of such a, a latent dysfunction. Uh, and I do not think so because the judges need to be, to be helped because they do have case load. And from the archaic uh, 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 colonial uh, uh, justice administration we inherited from the British, it could take ages because of the requirements of due process and fair hearing. Therefore, considering the enormity of the problem of corruption for this country, why do we not specify certain judges whose only duty will be to attend to cases of corruption and no other? so that there will be no excuse for the delays we have been uh, experiencing, whereby cases are a cost for five, six, ten years, and those who are supposed to be tried are on bail, and they end up becoming sometimes senators, sometimes governors, who then have immunity and you cannot touch them again. Mm. Suleiman has a question for you. Absolutely, because uh, we're not done with uh, those that that have been mentioned. And uh, if we're talking about senators, uh, go to the place you just landed, senators and some of these people who have immunity, uh, we would love to know about those who don't have immunity that have been mentioned, especially those who were once in office and now they're no more in office. Uh, do you have petitions against those people? And what is the place of the fraud unit of the Nigeria police in all of this fight against corruption? Uh, you must know that uh, generally you could talk about two categories of cases in terms of fraud, corruption, embezzlement, misappropriation, money laundering, whatever. 
uh, all these agencies, the police, the, uh, the ICPC, uh, the EFCC, uh, they secure day in, day out convictions in the courts against uh, what we will consider minor instances of corruption. Scores and scores of conviction. It is the elites, the political elites, the elites of the public service, the elites of the banking industry, the elites of the private sector that uh, uh, because they have the resources, because they have the senior advocates of Nigeria to help them, that drag all these cases uh, ad infinitum in the court. So, it is, so if you talk about the serious fraud office of the police, of course, they are doing their work. But I do not think those are the things that work in Nigeria uh, this is the longest stealing of our patrimony. Those are the ones that uh, 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 worry Nigerians and worry this particular administration. Well, Prof, the, the committee... That is the type you are talking about. Can, are being handled as they can be handled by the serial force office of the Nigerian police force. All right. The, the, we understand your committee also recommended that... Uh, also that the committee recommended that the president reopen the Halliburton scandal case. And many ask, look, what informs that? I mean, do you really think that that case will be reopened, given the fact that there are many who think there are big shots involved in that case? Our position in PACAC is that the case should be reopened. Just as we believe that uh, the case of uh, Malabo, OPA 245, should be reopened. These are cases in which Nigeria lost billions of Naira. Some people, Ali, uh, Ali Button and uh, another, uh, maybe Kellogg, and uh, some uh, other companies from uh, Italy, uh, Germany, Japan, uh, they, they came to, uh, to, 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 uh, to, to do business in Nigeria. In the process, they got the job and, they, and, and there was bribe, bribery involved. Now, because of the appropriate law in the U.S., which forbids their companies to uh, do business abroad through bribery, uh, they were investigated, they were taken to court, they pleaded guilty, and they were fined a humongous amount of money. And in the process, they released the names of Nigerian officials uh, to whom they shared the money. Then, we have been wanting the federal government of Nigeria to do the needful. It's not been done. So our advice is that it should be reopened. Uh, right. Same thing with OPN 245, with Danny Tete, uh, the Abachas and others. Uh, you know what has gone on about that one. It is important that that be reopened, including what the, uh, uh, the previous attorney general did in terms of intervening in uh, getting some of their money back to Nigeria. They need investigation. So we believe the, 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 the position of PACA is that they and such similar cases should be reopened. We also believe that cases that have been stored in court, uh, you know their names, a lot of them are in, in the Senate, some are not in the Senate, but whoever we believe such cases should be reopened because there are consequences for the public perception of corruption, they have consequences for the belief of the population concerning the seriousness of this administration to deal with corruption. Now, if we could get those cases reopened and they could be uh, settled one way or the other, if they are discharged and acquitted, of course, the court dockers will be free to add other cases. If they were convicted, it will help in terms of deterrence to others who believe that they have committed the offense, nothing will happen to them, the government will be worried 
after going to court day in day, 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 in, day out with their uh, well-paid lawyers, and that after about 10 years, somebody is going to forget. Now, that will let people know that that cannot happen. It will also help those who are or sit now in public offices that whether it's five or ten years, the answer of the law, the terms of corruption will get, uh, will get her too. That is why uh, we strongly believe, and we have so recommended, that all such cases should be reopened. Now, your committee strongly supports the uh, arrest of judges, but ever since then, they have responded, several allegations being published, and there's been reactions about those allegations. What do you think about the allegations or the response that the judges are now beginning to give following their arrests? Uh, I will respond as follows. First of all, I'm able to say that our committee is a complete and unmitigated support of the arrest of those judges. One, the DSS has the power to arrest people for corruption, to investigate and arrest, because if you have the appropriate knowledge, you will know that corruption is essentially a security issue. It's a security issue because directly, a direct example is the case of uh, Dasuki Gate. Uh, and then, of course, when somebody is supposed to repair your road and he sees the money and the road is bad, people die on the road. Prof, I'm afraid we don't have a lot of time. Um, you know, he, he's asked the question, what do you make of the allegations now that the judges are also releasing their own statements? Uh, uh, I, is, for me to respond to that, I should give the background. We're, okay, I will try or, to be... We're already out of time, I'm afraid. Okay. Yeah. What, what, what I would say is this. The allegations cannot hold water because after you have been accused as a lecturer for making sexual advances to a student immorally, then you come and give the argument that actually it was that student who initiated it. What I'm saying is that the judges, if they do ask shame, by what we know of judges, you know, they should not be responding on the pages of the paper. What they should do is to write to CJN, or when they are being tried, they should make their cases. Prof, <clears throat> I've just been told that you'll be able to make your points when we return from this time out. Do join us again.